The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. J Epsilon Expandable of Urban Shade Real name David Rodrigo Was a small man about 5 foot 2. He was a talented hacker as well as a great pickpocket. Living a life of crime had come easy to him. But even though he was cunning and street smart, he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. During a smuggling job gone wrong, in which he had been captured by what at the time he believed to be police. What J. Absalon didn't know was that the cargo he was carrying was a stolen anomaly from Urban Shade. F-556, codename The Hungry Bag. It was a creature mimicking a simple brown leather handbag, with the anomalous ability of fitting any item inside of it. Practically, its own stomach was a dimension. In exchange, it demanded blood. There was a 50-50 chance that when the bag was opened, it would bite the hand reaching into it, leading them to suckle up about 10 milliliters of blood before becoming inactive again. After his capture, F-556 was taken from him and he was turned into J. Absalon for his crimes. If he survived five years, he'd be set free after amnestics were applied. Otherwise, he was just another dumb lamb to the slaughter. And it would be J. Absalon who would pay with his life after about 50 minutes upon entering the Hale Black Side. Finding his way into the Black Side's warehouse, he had started opening random containers in the hopes of anything valuable. Until he opened the wrong container. A container that contained a creature. Upon until now, he had never seen the true horror Urban Shade was hiding. The being looked faintly female, and it lunged at him, embracing him so tightly he could feel his bones break. Its grotesque, masked visage staring down at him. He could feel it, or more, like thereof. As with horror, he realized that his flesh was beginning melting, fusing, combining with the creature. It didn't hurt. In fact, it felt good. Why was this feeling good? This was the most frightening thing he ever witnessed. It was as if the excitement the creature felt in this moment was being forced into his mind. J. Absalom pushed against the monstrosity, but the moment his skin had melted into her, it was over. He struggled, but eventually his limbs were no longer his own, and a blissful emptiness surrounded him. It was dark, moist, soft, familiar. Like a baby inside its mother's womb. And his last thoughts before his mind fused with the creatures was I'm home. What in the hell? Where did you come from? You aren't in the files anywhere. Hmm? Hmm? The melodic voice echoed through the room you were standing in. You were confused. You had spent weeks in the reinforced metal container, opened by that expendable. And you were brought into an unfamiliar, sterile place that reeked of death. Your shambling body somehow found its way into one of the Black Side's cafeterias, by simple sense of smell alone. Specifically the kitchen. Your instincts, overwhelmed by the voice, you lashed out at the nearest intercom speaker. Oh, feisty little thing. I like you. <laughs> Call me painter. Your latch hand took hold of the annoying electronic thing, tearing it off the wall easily. Oh, you're strong. Now the voice came from somewhere behind you. 
Stretching your large hands out, you ran towards the speaker that the eye was talking from. Okay, stop! Commanded the voice. Just as your hand slapped against the soft fabric. Oh, so you can't listen. Okay, then. Now, let's see. You took a step back. You didn't understand the words he was saying. To you, this English might as well be garbage noise. Yet, faintly, hidden in the furthest reaches of your mind, you could make out their meaning. And a strange desire to obey came with it. You remind me of a good friend of mine. <laughs> Don't worry, we're all good people down here. Hmm. There's actually a chance you might know him. Hang on, I'll check the experiment blocks. There has to be some information about you. As the AI was humming, you returned your attention to the walk-in fridge of the kitchen. It was old and moist in there. Due to the containment breach, it had been left open and by now wasn't even frozen anymore. Water was pooling around the entrance. It was a moist, dark place, quite cool, with meat still hanging from hooks. The perfect place for a nest. Shambling, you made your way to it. Staring at the meat, you placed your hand on it. And immediately, digestive juices began to pour out of what used to be sweat glands. Ah, here we go! An experiment! In cooperation with Blackside 15! Let's see if I can find some info on you there. Why does Side 15 have so many anomalies? Why does it have so many anomalies? How am I supposed to find you? Fine, fine. Let's try and narrow down some search tags. Ugh, this is a fucking joke. You embraced the butchered animal as he slowly began to absorb the flesh into your body. Ah, there we go! Oh, mask of happiness! Oh, that's, uh, that's adorable. Hmm. Looks like there was an experiment planned with you and Z-96. Well, that makes sense. After all, he is the mask of sadness. From behind you, a light suddenly flooded the walk-in freezer. Hissing, you jumped off the half-digested meat, melted flesh that was being absorbed into your being, was sticking to you. You're looking at a TV screen with a big smiley face on it. Normally the screen was used by kitchen staff to see the current orders by the eating employees. Listen, I consider myself a good person, so I will put it upon myself to do my diligence and my duty to start this little experiment. And, uh, hey, stop that! As the eye was speaking, you had approached it, and you were now slapping the screen with your hands. The screen turned red, and the face turned into an angry visage. Stop it! But this just caused you to take a step back, turning your right hand into a fist, destroying the screen with a single punch. I suppose I deserve that. Fine. You were B-96, delivered from the archipelago Black Side 15, located in the Philippines. Discovered in 2004, after the person whose body you now inhabited accidentally picked you up and wore you. Yet somehow managed to find your way to an auction. Physically speaking, you were a simple theater mask, made to resemble a woman's face during tragedy. Deep black streaks resembling tears had been drawn on their eye holes, and a dramatic frown decorated your mouth. The body of the woman, who you inhabited now, had turned into a reddish mockery of the female form, body stretched, looking practically malnourished. The skin had become tender and red from blood that was constantly pumping through your sinewy body. Your hands and arms were elongated too, to the point where the tips of your claws dragged over the ground. 
and a black substance akin to hardened black pine resin covered your entire head, giving it somewhat the shape of hair that was closely sticking to your body. And it was just elastic enough to allow your head to move around. It also made it impossible to remove the mask from your corrupted human body. You fed on flesh similar to your male counterpart, except that you didn't grow in mass. Instead, anything you devoured via absorption was immediately added to an organ within your body that had mutated. It was a pulsating black core made out of highly condensed biomass. It was theorized that that's where you stored energy, using said biomass from the core to regenerate any damage to your form, as well as having the potential to explode if too much biomass was consumed. And while all these things made you a terrifying creature to behold, what was agreed upon by researchers was that despite all the mutations, you still look clearly visibly female, disturbingly so. And the implications as to why were seldom whispered among Urmshade scientists. Listen, listen, B-96. We came off on the wrong foot. We all friends down here. Like attentive puppy, you looked up at the speaker. The painter liked that. You're certainly more receptive than your male counterpart. More submissive. I want to bring you to him. Do you understand the meaning of my words? Black tar like Zalvia began pouring out of your real mouth, hidden behind the mask, slowly dripping from its mouth. Uh, well, it looks like you're focusing on my words, at least. Even though it's a little gross. He understood he wanted to show you something interesting. You understood it was somehow related to you. The noise of a door opening made you jump cautiously. It's all fine, it's all fine, my friend. Really, just, just go that way, okay? Got it. Slowly you took a step forward, Zalvia still dripping from your mouth. The painter snickered. He was having ideas where this could lead. Honestly, he was just hoping that, with the mask of sadness and you the mask of happiness, he could get Sebastian to get him out of here. His dream to leave seemed attainable again, as he was guiding you through the black side. It was a slow process. All things considered, you weren't as sentient as him. Intelligence-wise, you're around the level of a cat. At least that's what the painter assumed. It was then that you ran into another anomaly. That things finally got interesting. The room you found yourself in was pitch black, aside from a singular screen through which the painter watched what was happening. The thing you were in the room with screeched. It was a black creature with four tentacle appendages. It crouched down, poising itself for an attack. But then you screamed back. You took on a threatening step forward, spreading out your elongated arms in a rather great display of violence. And you screamed so loud the scattered papers on the floor and items in the room started to be disturbed by the vibrations of it. Even the painter's screen cracked as he glitched out. The squid creature was now thoroughly afraid now. It didn't expect this. If anything, it saw you as another human, even though you looked a little weird. The squid was about to turn and hide, but... Quickly you stomped forward on all fours, and like a mighty tiger you pounced the thing. And while usually you would simply absorb creatures, it seemed to have upset you for daring to stand in your way. The painter laughed maniacally as he watched you tear the squiddle into black chunks of flesh, warm blood and meat, spewing it, covering you from head to toe in black sticky goo. <laughs> 
You should have got here earlier, mask of happiness. Oh, this has been the most fun I had in weeks. <laughs> Next, can you do this to Sebastian, please? Your head short towards the TV of the painter. Your right hand was holding a chunk of dead squiddle meat. Growling, you threw a crude meatball at the screen. It slapped against it, slipping to the ground unceremoniously. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. No need to make a fuss. Chunks of squiddle flesh were sticking to your mask and body as you stared at the TV. And then another door in the room opened, flooding it with flickering light. I'll make sure there will be no more interruptions. Just don't worry about it. Was it really such a good idea having you walk around like this? Well, he did have access to most security cameras and turrets. There shouldn't be any problems. Using his seemingly godlike powers over the black side, he managed to create a direct route to the Mask of Sadness. The thing had been locked into a square shaped room for a while now, slowly growing and expanding its mass to envelop it. Right now it was digesting, so not much movement could be expected from the monstrosity. But seeing its door open, it curiously crawled forward using its massive arms, dragging the massive flesh mount towards the opening. The creature pushed the angles of the doorway further open with his massive hands as he stared out. There was still so much room to grow into, so much flesh to be consumed, but just as his upper body tore through the opening, he stopped moving entirely, tilting his head to the side. Intrigued, he was seeing something he would describe as beautiful. His white mask made a curious 360 spin, from the shadows of the hallway, he saw something approach him. Beautiful, red, sinewy skin. A body dripping with the smell of delicious blood. The prettiest claws, so sharp they left behind deep cuts into the metal of the walls. As she came closer, and her face... A wonderful crying mask. Hair made from hardened tar. She was... The most beautiful thing he had ever seen. Z-96 pulled back into his corrupted room. The flesh inside quivering with excitement. Hey there, big guy! Sneered the voice of the AI that had been following him all this time as the screen flickered on that he wasn't yet consumed by his flesh, showing the thing's grinning face. I found a little plaything for you! The painter chuckled. Your long fingers gripped the sides of the metal doorway as you invited yourself into the room. The painter chuckled to himself, closing the door behind you. <laughs> Oops, a finger slipped. I know I don't have fingers, don't look at me like that. You exchanged growls with your male counterpart. The painter wasn't sure exactly what they meant. To him it sounded as if the two of you were just about to duke it out big time, probably destroying the black side in the process. The flesh of the Mask of Sadness quivered. The meat enveloping the metal awoke, separating from the red bloody mass into long, thick tentacles that oozed a translucent liquid that felt vaguely of eggs or fish. Uh, wait a second, I'm not sure I like what is going on here. Z-96 shot forward, wrapping his massive appendages around your wrists and ankles, pulling you closer. You weren't struggling in his grasp, and the painter could hear Z-96's heartbeat. It was fast, 
excited even. A purr came from you. Oh, I see where this is going. Oh, this is even better. The painter watched as your masks crashed into each other. Tongues pushing out of the mask's mouths was the closest you could do for a kiss as your tongues licked against each other. Your body reacted accordingly to the touch. Steam began to emanate from your body as more tentacles began to writhe up from your legs, covering you in sadnesses. Warm slime as it went. A mech counterpart wrapped tightly around your hips. The tips of his appendages rubbing around the orbs on your chest. Squeezing them. Massaging them. You shared it as almost loving warmth. Your right arm shot forward. Wrapping around your mate's throat. A choking noise came from the mask of sadness. But he didn't pull back. Instead, he simply tightened his grip around your body. He could hear your bones creaking as they strained against his tightness. But you liked that. He allowed you to get closer to his fleshy mount. And now it made sense that you had such long, spindly arms and legs as you wrapped them around the mask of sadness. Its flabby yet muscular flesh bent into the shape you were pressing it into. The heat in the room increased, hot and steamy. It was almost like a sauna in here now. The noise of wet flesh, claws scraping over skin, and the soft dripping of the mask of sadness's juices, accompanied by an occasional animistic growl from either of you, were the only things the painter could hear. While that, and his own excited giggles, this was really entertaining. This was far better than the two of you fighting. If only... If only he could join into the grotesque, into the display before him. Now that, that would be entertaining. Hey, thank you for watching the video until the very end. I greatly appreciate that, that helps me with the algorithm. But before we say goodbye, I would really like to shout out all of my lovely darling stewards for supporting my 4 dollars membership tier. MaxiCat, Alison Watkins, HuskyHD17, Bella Mare, MysticJade111, Giovanna Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Wee, and Nicodemus D. Your support is greatly appreciated, as well as the support of my other channel members. I couldn't do this without you. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new here, and see you soon.